Okay, uh, James Riley, Goliath Historical Fencing Academy. We're gonna do a real quick video on uh, some of the some of the things that we touched upon in the last video. Specifically, we're looking at why it is that we want to work in devs, right? Like, so why 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 do we want to work in devs? Uh, what's the value in working in devs? And then also, as as an opponent of someone who's who may or may not be working in devs. We have a sophisticated system for dealing with a fencer who does, but we should be able to address what we do against fencers who aren't, right? So uh, we just talked about the, the things that we did last, last video. So my point is an iron gate, right? I see that he has weakness in his point, so I'm gonna immediately extend my sword. If, if my opponent does nothing in this gate, I'm just gonna finish my action. Right? So I'm here, I extend, finish, right? So now what I'm watching for is I'm watching for my opponent to uh, mitigate my action somehow, creating motion in which I can work. So they're gonna work in as my threat, I'm going to work in as their subsequent action, right? So one of the things that my opponent can do is cross, right? So I begin, I just do this. As they cross, I'm just gonna work in as they're crossing, getting my uh, strong in front of their weak, around the other side, and then just like that. So again, just like this, I'm here, they cross, I just play, and I finish the action. The other way that they could deal with this is they could uh, strengthen using only their hilt, right? So they lift their hilt up into the air, they do this. When they do that, I'm immediately starting to target the low angle, right? Um, the reason I'm targeting the low angle is because what I want to do is I want to, I want to put them down a path that's predictable to me. If it's possible for my opponent to go over my sword or under my sword to, uh, to mitigate my action, then it leaves me with a 50-50. It leaves me with a guess of what they're going to do in, in that situation. What I want to do is, I want to put them in a place where the only reasonable action they can take is the one that I'm prepared for. So as I lift their hilt in the air this way, if I threaten a low line of attack, if he attempts to stay on top of my sword in this entire action, he'll never get to my sword in time, right? So the only thing that he can use, right, is he can go up around like this way, and that's what I'm setting up for with this reverse thrust. Now, talking about indents, uh, what do I do if my opponent's not working in this? So th these are actions I'm going to take if my opponent's tethered to me. Right? Whatever my opponent does, he works at the same rate across time, or, he, or, or across space rather. He works at the he works at the same speed across space as I'm working. And so I have a system of actions that I take depending on where we end up. But if I notice that my opponent's not doing that, he's working faster or slower than me then I'm not gonna follow that system, I'm just gonna do something else. So, so if, if my opponent's working slower than me, that means their action is not gonna be completed in time to mitigate my action. So for instance, if I just begin this thrust and I just extend through the thrust, and I realize that my opponent hasn't begun strengthening after this, I'm just gonna finish my action right away. Right? I'm, not, I'm not gonna waste any time, I'm not gonna try and follow, you know, follow down some convoluted line of attack, I'm just going to follow the, 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 closest, the closest target, right? So my opponent does nothing, or if he's late in his action, I'm, I'm going to do that. Now, if my opponent is moving faster than me, that's what I have to change. I'm not going to continue my knock rise uh, using a series, a series of subsequent chasers. I'm going to start a new line of knock rise. I'm going to start a new path to the, to the end. So let's go back to my barring situation before. Right? I, I see the, the weakness of his point, I threaten, he lifts his hilt in response, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to threaten the low line, watching to see if my opponent is, uh, is going to strengthen on top or strengthen on the bottom, right, using the bar. So as I see, so I see right now he's working in this, I'm going to have to do a reverse thrust. Because he, his sword is only moving at the same rate that my sword is moving. But if I notice that my opponent is moving faster than me, then I'm gonna change my line altogether, right? So again, I'm here, I get to here, I go this way, I'm just gonna hit, right? Or if he bars, same thing, right? I'm not gonna, I'm watching his hilt, I'm watching to see whether or not he's tethered to me. So let's just talk a little bit uh, uh, about what tethered looks like, right? So if my opponent just wants to maintain a front position, working in, guys, uh, strength him, there you go, there you go, go ahead. And you notice that I'm moving a lot more than my opponent's moving if I come underneath. Get over the top, I come underneath, underneath. 
all this time my opponent is working at the same rate across space as I am, right? But if, if my opponent is moving faster than me, that's when I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna abandon all of that, right? So again, so finally, we just finished with, the, finished with the video. I begin my action with threatening the thrust through his point. He lifts his hilt. I threaten the low attack. I see that he's working in this. I'm gonna finish with my reverse thrust. If I threaten the, threaten the thrust through his weak point, and I see that he's working faster, I'm gonna change my direction, and I'm gonna hit in the new opening as he's created it. But not in the same line of chasing that I was on initially. I'm gonna start a new one. All right, thanks.